As you probably know, it's been a great year for gamers, but not so much for AAA corpos and their journalist buddies. For example, I don't know what's going on Jason Schreier, but the dude's just been freaking out so much lately. We get this example right here. Pirate Nation saying, Jason Schreier deleted his post about Dragon Age. So Jason had said, go woke, go bro, er, top the charts. And posting two images, one showing Veilguard's place on Steam for top sellers, and then also the SteamDB analytics for Veilguard. Someone had said, there's no way you genuinely like this trash. Jason said, I actually don't like the game very much, but I do like seeing you chuds get dunked on. However, as we know, it seems like he's apparently decided to delete this entire post. Maybe that's because the information coming out about Veilguard is actually not looking that good after all, but who knows for sure why the man does what he does. Pirate Nation then said, at Jason Schreier, can't at him, chuds won, and <laughs> this is who's calling you a chud. <laughs> Once again, showing the tweet where he uh, was talking about like, dunking on the chuds or whatever. And that's, yeah, a picture of Jason Schreier. I mean, that's literally the picture from his profile pic, I believe. AI Emerald had responded saying, if the game's selling well, the trade value wouldn't be this low. Showing the screenshot. We can see it says, present this at any GameStop location, generated 11824. Offer expires at the end of business day today. And we got the various values, pro value, regular value. Let's take a look at regular value. It says, store credit up to 20 bucks, cash up to 14 bucks. And then we can see various people talking about how they're blocked by Jason, even having never interacted with him. Other people saying, me too. He blocks everyone associated with certain people. And another person here also saying me too, and showing an example of how they're blocked. I'm actually not blocked by Jason, but let me know what you think about why he's been acting the way he has over on Twitter lately. You think it's a part of the AAA industry at large, and maybe he's not happy with the way things are going there, and with how gamers keep getting wins over these predatory companies. Once again, let me know what you think. Let me know your insights in the comments, and moving on. So next, we've got Stefan Totilo, a journalist who was associated with Axios, MTV, and also the one and only Kotaku. Looks like he was actually an editor-in-chief over there. Anyways, he made this post saying, Ubisoft news from quarterly results. Headcount down to 18,666 as of September 30th, first 19,410 a year earlier. Star Wars Outlaws three post-launch patches have produced, quote, meaningful community sentiment improvement, unquote. Yeah, improved sentiment probably from people who already like the game. Some major Ubisoft cope right there. And then he says, company again hints that the Anti, quote, woke, unquote, attacks on its games have hurt sales. Exec committee taking, quote, actions aimed at tackling the dynamics behind the polarized comments around Ubisoft so as to protect the group's reputation and maximize our game's sales potential, which is the highlighted area in this attached screenshot. I find it interesting that he's the one actually saying this is like, quote, unquote, anti-woke when Ubisoft never even used those words. But okay. I love the implication that he's making there too, like... Hey, if you, if you have anything negative to say about Ubisoft that could hurt their reputation, if you call them Ubislop, for example, oh, you're, you, Ubisoft is making more Ubislop, that's anti-woke. How dare you? You got a bootleg for these corporations. That's the woke thing to do. That's what we want you to do. And so next we have this Khalif person who commented on Stefan Totilo's post. And the reason we're taking a look at this is because Khalif has commented on a number of gaming situations, always seeming to defend the corporations. If I recall, this guy was going kind of viral during Concord's massive flop, where, he, where if I recall, he was defending Concord. And here we see him commenting on Stefan Totilo's post and getting mad at gamers. We'll watch that in the clip in a moment. Some more information about this guy. In his own bio, he tries to flaunt how he was on Peacock and New York Times and Good Morning America. Wow, so cool, man. Yeah, but not really. Anyways, yeah, that's Khalif. He says, I absolutely love seeing developers standing up for their work and pushing back against bad actors like we've seen in the conversation around Assassin's Creed. We don't need to spend energy on fake issues. I spoke fake issues. <laughs> that's pretty insulting to the people of Japan who have uh, absolutely taken reasonable umbrage with the situation going on AC Shadows. But okay, fake issues, right? Mm -hmm. Very tolerant take right there. I spoke on at Spawn on Me this week about this, and uh, once again, in the three-minute clip we're about to watch, he's upset at gamers and defending Ubisoft, apparently, so let's see what uh, this guy has to say, huh? Tillo put out this piece. There was a, uh, a Ubisoft uh, stakeholder meeting, quarterly meeting, and one of the parts that was discussed here was, and this is paraphrasing and, and I'm going to read it what Stephen Totillo said. Shout out to Stephen Totillo who needs to come on the show. We need to get him on. 
Company again hints that the anti-woke attacks on its games have hurt sales. Execu executive committee uh, has talking about actions aimed at tackling the dynamics behind the polarized comments around Ubisoft so as to protect the group's reputation and maximize our game's sales potential. So this is important. And I think the reason why this is important is because one of the things that we have seen, and again, this goes back and dovetails around to what the BS that Grums and all these grifters are doing is their whole thing is that they want to defund the gaming industry. They want to make it so that games that supposedly have racial positivity and DEI compliant features are no longer made in the space because they're either really bad, they don't want them, or they, or they put politics into their games in a way that doesn't feel um, reasonable or feel shoehorned in, right? So it seems like odd phrasing to break down what he's referring to as quote unquote, defunding the gaming industry, as he put it. That phrasing would be more accurate if he was talking about, for example, how many gaming companies get government subsidies, which has actually been going terrible. Like that's a terrible use of taxpayer dollars. The argument for it that people use is saying that it helps create jobs and it's good for the economy. But look how terribly mismanaged these corporations are. They're spending more money on their games than ever in making them in development, oftentimes struggling to recoup the cost and hit break even point, let alone profits. And now they're going through mass layoffs year over year now, mass layoffs. But once again, I don't think that's what he's referring to anyways. So. Let me get back to whatever he's talking about. He seems to take umbrage with people criticizing DEI initiatives. Well, here's the issue that I have with it. DEI initiatives are often extremely disingenuous. And at this point, it's just basically like corporate jargon. Basically corporations just trying to desperately secure some ESG funding. And this is really ironic because he's complaining about grifters, but he's apparently fine when corporations grift. What stands out to me in this conversation is the fact that now some of that is trickling upward in a way that I believe is a slippery slope. And the reason I say that is because we currently have an industry in which we as an industry are very afraid of talking back to the audience because those are the folks who, who, who pay for the games that we make. Those are the people who, to a certain extent, are, you know, uh, 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 you know, providing us a, a, li a livelihood through the work that we do as people who work in the video game industry through the games that they purchase, right? By saying this out loud, <clears throat> this adds a potential layer of validity to a thing that we don't have any metrics on. And that's dangerous because what it winds up doing is it signals out to the people who are like Mark Kern that all of these ginned up ideas and all of these things are affecting sales in a way that is actually causing problems for games that are coming out. Now, mind you, it's a hard thing to talk about because one, no one is taking metrics on wokeness. <laughs> no one is doing the number crunching on what games are woke, what games are politically charged in a way that feels un untainable or unsustainable to, to folks in this circle. Three, no one is counting these circles of people because they are mass, they're in, they're lumped in with all gamers, right? It's not like if you went to the anti-woke space and was like, yo, let's take a survey of all of you so we can figure out what damage you're doing to the space. So this then changes the conversation in a much broader way because now, companies like Ubisoft are potentially thinking about the impact that is happening to them around an issue that doesn't exist. And I think that's the problem here. So yeah, it's really weird that he keeps harping on this whole like anti-woke thing when that's a line that Stefan Dotilo used and now he's using too, but Ubisoft never even actually said that. It's especially weird because he keeps trying to say it's like improper phrasing to find a metric on, but once again, he's the one using it. And people have a negative perception towards Ubisoft for a lot of reasons, including simply that they've been very predatory in their monetization practices, which is something that Khalif didn't acknowledge at all, which is kind of odd. But hey, if he wants to keep talking about the DI stuff and the anti-woke stuff, we can talk about that too. Because despite him saying that this is something that's not really a thing, like it's not a factor, in actuality, it is. It turns out when gamers see something that comes off very forced, very pandery, very fake, very disingenuous, very super lame, 
they might be turned off of purchasing that product, which shouldn't be surprising at all. And for the record, that can also include people of the demographic that these corporations are attempting to pander to. Great example of this just happened with Veilguard. The LGBT rep in that game has been absolutely terrible. And while some LGBT journalists, armchair activist types, etc, etc, have attempted to defend it, other LGBT people have been calling it out, saying that, for example, Tosh as representation has just been absolutely disgusting. That Tosh is a trash character, like literal Garbo status. Let me know what you think about that stuff. Moving on, we've got one more thing to take a look at here. Khalif had also retweeted this article from PC Gamer that says, Metaphor Refantasio's success is further proof that politics are good in video games, actually, no matter what reactionaries tell you. Now, I don't want to talk about this simply because Khalif retweeted it. A lot of these sort of corpo bootlicking type of individuals are currently signal boosting this article. And first of all, Fantasio is awesome. Second thing, this is an extremely disingenuous article. The main issue that gamers take with politics in games is not simply that there's in-game politics in the games that can work and be awesome. Same thing with any media. For example, Gundam. There's in-universe politics in all the Gundams, and it works. It's awesome. What's not so cool is when someone takes their media and tries to use it to shoehorn in very obvious political rhetoric in which they're clearly trying to influence you in real life in some way to do what they want you to do, to vote a certain way, etc, etc. At that point, it's basically becoming propaganda. But yeah, this article is currently being shared around by a lot of these corpo bootlicking individuals acting like this is the best thing that they've seen in a while. This disingenuous article is really owning the gamers. However, the article is also getting plenty of pushback. For example, Rosie Bell Musain, I think you missed the point here. A bad game just can't wear virtue signaling as a trench coat. Everyone will be able to see there's three raccoons under it. And we also got Asmongold saying, no real people have a problem with politics in games. Metal Gear Solid and Metaphor prove this. The thing people have a problem with is political and social ideology being inserted into a game in a heavy-handed, one-dimensional, and patronizing way. Unfortunately, or maybe very fortunately actually, I'm running out of time here. Gotta head out to Muay Thai in a moment, so I don't have any time to go through that disingenuous article. Regardless though, we can clearly see what they're trying to do. Let me know what you think about that as well as the other stuff covered in this video in the comments. And if you enjoyed my coverage, please consider liking and or subscribing to the channel. Appreciate you. Have a great weekend, and I'll see you in the next one.